Hello everyone, today as promised I will be starting the programming and logic gate series. Um, throughout the series we'll be covering the basic fundamentals of computer engineering and logic circuits. Um, some of you may wonder why this is important and the reason it's important is because behind that high level C code that you write, whether it's Python or Java or C or C++, there's lower level stuff going on. Uh, some of these are like assembly and logic gates and circuits. I will most likely be covering times 86 assembly in a later series just because um, if you guys watch my latest update video I was talking about how it, I think it's very useful for any programmer to know even if you're not looking into hand coding assembly um, and by the way hand coding assembly um, programs are really fast and efficient but even if you're not interested in that it's still good to know what's going on behind your program it'll make debugging so much easier but anyways in this series we're not going to focus on that we're just going to be focusing on hardware uh, for the first video I thought we'd start off with just simple gates such as and or and not gates um, so let's just jump right into it so first I'll cover basic binary because you can't really cover gates without um, covering it, but we'll go into it more extensively later on. But binary is basically a base 2 system. Uh, that means that there's two base units, or 0 and 1. In everyday life, we use the decimal system, which is base 10. Uh, we have digits 0 through 9, and then when we reach 10, uh, all we're simply doing is carrying a 1 over to the next column um, and putting a 0 in the first column, right? So we have your ones column, your tens column, your hundreds column, your thousands column, your ten thousands column, etc. In binary, these columns are called bits, and like I said, we'll go into this more later on. But what's important to think of is that ones means true or um, on, and zero means false or off. And it's kind of funny because uh, binary is actually a lot simpler of a system than base. 10, but people struggle with binary more. Anyways, I just thought that was interesting and I'd throw that in. And is a very important gate. Uh, so we're going to start with that. And as the name suggests, it depends on all the conditions being true. Um, NAND gates, which is basically just an AND gate and a NOT gate inverting the output, is the most fundamental gate, as uh, unique combinations of NAND gates can make practically any gate. You can have more than two inputs in a, in a NAND gate, but typically not less, um, but to keep it simple in this tutorial we're just going to use two. Uh, we'll label these A and B conventionally. The final boolean coming out we'll call this X because it's that's how it's conventionally named. Um, and to make this easy let's think of this in terms of lights, uh, light bulbs, because lights are much like binary. They only have two states, on or off. There is generally no third state. Um, if light A goes on um, and we're thinking of this as an AND gate. And light B does not go on, light X will remain unlit. It will not turn on. If light A is off and light B goes on, light X will still remain unlit because not all the conditions are true. If neither A or B is turned on, <laughs> surprise, X won't turn on. But if A and B are both on, then light X will turn on because all the conditions are true. Um, a real life example of this would be a bank machine. Uh, to withdraw, multiple conditions have to be true. You have to have a valid card to be able to access your account. You have to have the pin matching that card to verify that you own that account. And you have to have an available balance to withdraw the amount of money that you want to withdraw. So even if two of the criteria are met, you still don't get money. For instance, if you had your bank card and you entered your PIN correctly in the terminal and you tried to withdraw $500 but you only have $450 remaining in the account, the balance condition will fail and you will not get your money. You will most likely get an error message instead. For gates, we have truth tables. And what this is is just a little documentation of how the input correlates with the output. So in an AND gate, if we have A and B, if A and B are both 0, X will be 0. If A or B is 1, we still get 0 because not all conditions are true. The only time we get X to be a 1 is if A and B, um, or if you have A, B, C with three inputs, all inputs have to give a 1 um, for the AND gate to output a 1. 
So now that we've covered an AND gate, I think I'll jump over to an OR gate. So an OR gate is a simple gate, and unlike AND, it evaluates true if one of any condition is true. Um, again, you can have more than two inputs. If light A is turned on, but light B is not, light X will turn on. If light B is turned on and light A is not turned on, X still turns on. If A and B are turned on, surprise, X will turn on as well. Um, except in the case of an exclusive OR gate, which we'll cover later. Uh, the only case where light X will fail to turn on is if light A and light B are not turned on. A real life example of this is um, most uh, fire alarms in most public buildings. Uh, most of them will sound if smoke is detected or if somebody pulls the alarm manually. Um, so if smoke is detected, even if somebody doesn't pull the alarm, the alarm will still go off. And similarly, if somebody pulls the alarm, even if there's no smoke detected, the alarm will still go off. So that's what I'm trying to get at. The truth table for an OR gate um, is the complete, well, not the complete, but very different from an AND gate. So A and B are zero, X is still zero. That's the same as the AND gate. If A or B is one, X is a one which is what's different from an AND gate. And similarly to an AND gate, if A and B are both true, you still get a true out of X. Now we'll jump over to a NOT gate. Now a NOT gate is just simply an inverter, and it's used to form more complex gates. If we stick a NOT gate onto the end of an AND gate, we get a NAND gate, which inverts the truth table for the, the AND gate. And similarly, we can put um, an, a NOT gate onto an OR gate, and that'll give us a NOR gate. NAND is the most fundamental, but both NAND and NOR are used as chips. Um, for instance, in the PlayStation 3 console, for any of you that are interested, earlier models, the FAT models, used the, I believe it was the 128-bit NAND chip, while the later slim models used the 64-bit NOR flash. I want to say 64, but I can't remember exactly. Um, but yeah, that's just a little bit of an example. Not only has one input, which is A. And uh, here's the very simple truth table for the NOT gate. Um, so if A is 0, X is 1. If A is 1, X is 0. It's just simply inverting the output, right? That's why it's called an inverter. Now, I was going to tag the, the NAND and the NOR gate into this video, but I'm going to save that for the next video um, just because... Uh, I have like a little plan written out, so uh, we'll be covering NAND, NOR, and Exclusive OR tomorrow, and Exclusive OR is kind of a fun gate because it's used in cryptography and all that kind of fun stuff. But anyways, we've covered the basic gates in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like below, comment any questions or comments you guys may have on the video, and of course, subscribe if you're feeling happy today. Um, and yeah, the next video will be going into NAND, NOR, and Exclusive OR. Uh, this video series will probably contain uh, about 10 or 11 videos, but I might uh, extend it more. And like I said, I'm planning on bringing an assembly series as well. And I will see you guys later.